All right. Check one, two, three. Check. Check one, two. Do you copy? Check one, two, three. Do you hear me? Yes. A good Friday it is. I am so happy it is Friday. Um, not that Fridays are, uh, <laughs> Fridays for, pa you know, our schedules are different as pastors, but uh, uh, closer definitely to, what is it, uh, Sunday. An exciting time as we get closer to service and and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, anticipation there always every week. Uh, but um, it is good to be here with you this morning. Um, and let me get there. All right. Well, I hope uh, you all are doing well. And, and uh, yeah, a lot to be thankful for. I think as I was getting ready uh, today in the morning, I just thinking about all the, the stuff we've been doing and, and how, um, how much of a, a blessing it has been for myself. Uh, just a great joy of of uh, journeying here with you and getting to know you more and uh, gaining new people that you know talking to new people that uh, uh, we've never met before and uh, what a blessing that has been just thinking about uh, people who have signed on and, and followed along in these last you know almost 50 days now I say 50 because uh, Pentecost. <laughs> Right, we're on we're on uh, our journey to the Pentecost, and that is what this Sunday is. So it's it's almost been fifty days of videos. It's amazing, uh, because time has flown by, and and I just uh, I think it's it's been great that uh, we've continued these these uh, that we've continued these videos uh, all throughout, and I hope that they have been beneficial for you in so many different ways um, but yes very good uh, why don't we begin uh, with a word a word of prayer the prayer the collect of the day uh, that will be coming up here shortly uh, good morning Gary <laughs> nice of you to join us this morning thank you for being here hope uh, hope you're doing good and and you and Jan are doing well, and, and she's recovering well as well. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us on this on this very good Friday. Um, all right. Pentecost. Why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Ascension, or I mean, uh, Pentecost, right? Sorry. Uh, but Pentecost is such a great day. Um, you know, pastors usually wear red, uh, uh, the red stole, uh, the picture of fire, the picture of the Holy Spirit, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. That is a great reminder to us as the Holy Spirit has called us. Um, again, it always brings you back to Article 3 of the Apostles' Creed about the work of the Holy Spirit. Very important as well. Um and we see right there, uh, as we'll go over that, uh, just a quick note for you on Sunday, for those who's, who are coming to physical church, uh, we actually, um, this is the bulletin for Sunday, and um, we actually printed out the whole service, so there's no need for, um, uh, I guess, touching any hymnals, right? Every, every page is here for you, boom, boom, boom. And... You see the preview of all this? And here you go. So the, the, the whole service bulletin is printed out. Um, I know our wonderful secretary, Linda, she, um, she, uh, she was new to this, this type of program here, but she figured it out. And, and uh, with her um, diligence, uh, she, she, uh,
she got it done. So, uh, thanks to her uh, for this uh, bulletin. So, um, you'll receive one of these as you come to church on Sunday. And, um, yeah, it should be good. I'm excited. Uh, and definitely uh, on this season of Pentecost, a great rejoice as we uh, dwell in God's Word. Now, okay, so the readings for Sunday. We have from the Gospel or from our Old Testament, Numbers 11, 24 to 30. We also have uh, Acts 2, 1 to 21, John 7, 37 to 39, okay? And uh, today, uh, we're going to focus in on uh, Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. Oh, good morning, Matt. Hope you had a good dinner. For breakfast, uh, I think I had uh, black coffee. Two cups. I don't eat breakfast. I should. Anyways. Um, I don't know why I'm not a breakfast person. I, I just don't like feeling full. You know? Does that make sense? Like, I don't like feeling full in the morning. I like, I like feeling full maybe at dinner time, you know? Then I do my exercising and I feel better. But, uh, but morning, I'm like, ugh, my body's like not even moving yet. You know, it's just kind of trying to get into gear. But man, it's just the gears are tough. You know, it's just so tough to get in gear in the morning that, uh, man, my body just doesn't want to digest anything either, except liquid, right? So, anyways, uh, but yes, uh, John 7 is our gospel, uh, as it reads right here from 37 to 39 for Sunday, um, as it connects to, of course, uh, our epistle, our, our second reading in, in Acts. Um, for John 7, it reads. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Again, what does it say in John 14? It says that, um, I will send you the paraclete. I will send you the helper, the Holy Spirit, who will comfort you and guide you. Uh, and this sending of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 1, as Jesus ascends, there he uh, promises that as he leaves, he will send. And here at Pentecost, 50, 50 days, right? The great 50, and now... Uh, as we celebrated the great 50 of Easter, now we are here in the season of Pentecost. Uh, we arrive at the coming of the Holy Spirit. All right? Now, what is it about the Holy Spirit before we read Acts 2? Um, if you have the catechism, it's right here. And it reads, the third article of the Creed. Sanctification. Basically, how am I made holy? That is the question Article 3, Apostles' Creed answers. When we, when we say those words time and time again, third article, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ. Faith is not a human work. Faith is not of intellect it's not of human will or free will because we don't have that concerning our spiritual matters of faith. That we are dead in sin and we cannot decide or give or commit or, re or dedicate or whatever word we want to say. That we are dead in sin. We cannot be made alive by our own will but only by the will of God through his word. Through the sending of the Holy Spirit who creates faith in us. I believe that I cannot by my own, own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him in him. But the Holy Spirit has called me. How does the Holy Spirit call us? By his word. He has enlightened me with his gifts. What are the gifts? The word and the sacraments. Right? Baptism. 
God works by his word, gathering us by that, by that power of God's word uh, into his name. Uh, the Lord's Supper as well, of course. How it's sanctified. Again, right here, we see sanctified and kept me in the true faith. That we are made holy and we are kept in the true faith all by the work of the Holy Spirit through that very word. And here in Acts chapter 2, we see how the Holy Spirit is working. Why don't we read that together? Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. This is the upper room with the disciples. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language and they were amazed and astonished saying are not all these who are speaking galileans and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language parthians and medes and elamites and residents of mesopotamia judea cappadocia pontus and asia phrygia and pamphylia egypt and all the parts of libya belonging to cyrene and visitors from rome both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. So again, they're, they're hearing in their own native tongues by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, as they are speaking, uh, um, God's uh, sent ones. Uh, there they hear them in their own native tongue. Now, how amazing is that? They're hearing what? The mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mock, saying, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass, key word right here, that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know that's where our scripture ends, but I'm going to read a little more. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. All right, continuing on here. Um, verse 30. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set, on, set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up. And of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but himself, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. 
And many with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received this word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. All right, that is uh, our, our reading for the day. And uh, when we speak of Pentecost, again, a great picture of the power of the Holy Spirit as they were preaching, and, and um, as we see Peter's sermon at Pentecost, as we read throughout, that he was preaching about the mighty works of God. I think when we speak of uh, the mighty works of God, what is the mighty work of God? Right, And, and he really unleashes it there uh, from verse 22 and following, that... Uh, that uh, Jesus is indeed that mighty work as he came to this world uh, to do many of the wonders and signs that showed his own divinity as the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And there, by the foreknowledge and definite plan of God, what happened? Uh, he was to be crucified and killed um, by the hands of lawless men. Now, this is where uh, we see uh, St. Peter really preaching and there... Um, he was giving them uh, the will of God, uh, that uh, what they had done, you crucified him, you lawless men, right? And there uh, uh, the Lord by his will would raise him up again. Now, I think in this preaching, verse 37, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. You know, when we talk about the work of the Holy Spirit, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? To, to comfort, but also first, to convict, right? Um, to, to cut to the heart, right? What does Jesus say in Luke 24? He says, preach repentance and forgiveness, right? To Jerusalem and all the nations, Right? By the power of the Holy Spirit, through the very word, people are, by that very word, are called to repentance as they, well, find great comfort in the Christ and what he has done for the forgiveness of their sins. Now, as we look at Acts 2 right here, I think it's very important in a sense where by the power of the Holy Spirit, this wasn't Peter just kind of, uh, because he had eloquent speech, right, or he was wise in some way, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, they were equipped to do this very thing, to preach the word of God in all of its totality, all the mighty works of God, and even the stinging, like, uh, the stinging uh, reality of their sin. Um, and here we see that by this very word, by the very word of God, they were cut to the heart. Like they, they saw their own conscience. They knew that they were guilty of their sin. Hearing these words, the people said, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Right? And there they were. They went to be baptized, and they were forgiven of their sins, of course. And 3,000 people were added that day. I think at the end of the day, this is why the Word is so important, right? The coming of the Holy Spirit, equipping, equipping, and, and convicting all by the power of God's Word. Now, verse 21 reads, It shall come to pass... That everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? And this is the mighty work of God's word. Always pointing us to the name of the Lord. That in our sin, we call out to our gracious Lord, knowing full well He is the only one right? Where our faith resides, depending on what he has done, trusting in the gospel, knowing that God raised him up, loosing the pains of death, 
because it was not possible for him to be held by it. That means that because he lives, you shall also live. That your grave is not your end point, but that you have life in his name all by the mighty work of God. And St. Peter was preaching this text, or he was preaching these very words. He was preaching the will of God. The whole salvation story from his coming to this world and to dying and rising And there they, again, were cut to the heart. What shall we do? Right? And what a great picture this is. That by the very work of the Holy Spirit, all of these people, right? We, we talk about uh, the, the mighty wind there in the beginning. Uh, the native language heard in their own native language all by the power of of the Holy Spirit, the Parthians, the Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, Cyrene, and, and Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, they're all hearing it in their own tongues, the mighty works of God. I mean, this is the will of God, isn't it? All of it, right? Not only is it uh, Jesus, at the end of the day, uh, coming into this world, betrayed in the hands of lawless men, right? The one you crucified. But God raised him up. Victory, salvation, forgiveness of sins, right? Um, he would not be, uh, he would be loosed from the pangs of death because it was not possible that he could be held by it. And this is the word that we hear time and time again. See, that's the thing about the work of the Holy Spirit, friends. Is that, where does the Holy Spirit work? By the very word of God. When we hear God's word, that is where the Holy Spirit is working. How does the Holy Spirit work? By that very word that convicts and comforts us. John 16, right? I will send you the comforter. I will send you the, the counselor. I will send you the helper. And that helper will do what? In exact words, exact, of course, uh, it says, And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, this is John 16, verse 8 and following, Because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Um, concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Yes. Um, Satan himself. Again, that is what the Spirit of Truth brings. Verse 13, when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. You know, it says in our prayer today, what does it say? In our colic of the day. Now, these colics are very important because it really sets the tone for our theme of the day. And what does that colic say? It says, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day that by the same Spirit, right? To have a right understanding in all things evermore, to rejoice in His holy consolation. Again, this is all by the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gathers us to His Word. Not a feeling, you guys. Not your work. We, we really have to get that out of our system. Right? Like, why do I have faith? By the very word of God in my, that he has given to me, by his very word, the death upon the cross, the empty tomb, but also when I was a baby in my baptism. That's the mystery of our grace. So we trust in the word of God and how the Holy Spirit works. What does it say right there in, in Acts 2? Be baptized, repent, be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is how the Holy Spirit works. What do we say in the explanation? That we, don't, uh, that we are unable to come to the Lord, right? By our own human reason or strength. But the Holy Spirit has called me by what? The gospel. By the body and blood of Jesus. He has enlightened me with his gifts. What are these, uh, these uh, gifts? It's the word and sacrament. The gifts that open our eyes. The gift of the Holy Spirit. We have to really kind of realize the, the joy of Pentecost and the mighty rushing wind, knowing this is how God works. 
by the very word of God. You know, I told the confirmation kids yesterday um, on their final confirmation test. I think this is a very important question. I didn't even plan, you know, I didn't even plan to say this, but but the question is why an open-ended question I would answer, give them on their pretest for the confirmation is why why do we go to church? Why do we go to church? Because I think at the end of the day, there we find what our faith is. Does that make sense? Why do we go to church? Your answer will probably show where your faith is or where your trust is or where you, what you depend upon, right? One side will say what? One side will say, I go to church because, well, I didn't think I was going to be this today, but I'm going to bring out the papers again. Uh, <laughs> I recycle, by the way, so pardon me if you see... You know, I was an environmental science major at undergrad UC Irvine in California. You know that, right? I wanted to go to the Peace Corps when I was younger. You know that? Did you know that? Did you know that about me? But then I played music, and we got signed to a label, and I had to go on tour and play music. So that's the departure from Peace Corps. I was going to go to Peace Corps, though. That was my joy. That was my dream, actually. I want to graduate college and say, I want to go to Peace Corps because you need a degree for that. And I want to do a lot of environmental studies and works um, in distant lands. That was my goal. But then this music thing came along and we got signed and I'm like, okay, well, I guess uh, my mother said, you're not going on tour until you graduate college. So I graduated college and literally a day later, we were out on the road. That was my dream. Was my dream. Now I'm living the dream as a pastor. Day in, day out. I love it. Anyways, uh, what were you saying here? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes. Why do we go to church? Why do we? Por qué? Right? Why do we go? Uh, uh, go. Why do we go to the Iglesia, the Ecclesia in, in Greek? Isn't that, isn't that interesting how, um, why do we go to church? It's getting late. I know. Long devotion again. Ecclesia in, in, um, in Greek. Iglesia in Spanish, right? Church. Interesting. Spanish and Greek, so very similar in so many different ways, along with English. Anyways, why do we go to church? Why? Now, this is where we see our faith. Why do we go to church? Your answer will probably have an indication of where you are in your faith or where your faith trusts. Now, one side is what? Sorry, I'm just doing this spontaneously, so I hadn't had this prepared for you, but sometimes when things come up in your mind, you just kind of have to go with it, right? And you see this diagram, you've seen this from me time and time again, right? Why do we go to church? Now, now, what is this arrow indicating? Right here, what do you think? Uh, this arrow is indicating, I go to church to, to give something to God, or to give my time to God, or give Him praise, which is good, right? We praise God, right? We, of course we praise God. That's a great thing. But I, I think my tone, I think, in that sense is I'm going to go to church to do something for God. Like I am going for that very kind of works righteous that I'm trying to do something to please God in the sense of my inner conscience saying, I got to go to church because this is the Christian thing to do. This is the churchy thing to do. I, I got to fulfill my spiritual quota, my status, my attendance sheet, because at the end of the day, God's going to pull down the scroll of attendance and say, where were you on January 15th, 2020? Why did you go to church that Sunday? Right? We, we <laughs> I know I'm just joking about that. But it's easy to think that way, right? That we're actually doing something when we're going to church. Like we, we're guilty Let's say we haven't gone to church in a while and we're guilty of not going to church. And we say, I got to go to church. Right? And um, it becomes very legalistic of why I got to go to church. Right? I just got to get my, I got to do my Christian thing once a week, 45 minutes, hour, 30 minutes. I do that and then I go on with my life. Right? It's easy to fall into that. Trust me, every one of us, every single one of us, we know our flesh and we know that as if we're going to church to do something for God, right? And if that is, I think if that is where we're at, uh, let's just be very clear with us. Um, I think we, we do not see the whole picture of why we go to church. 
And church can become a burden, right? If it becomes something that you're doing by your own work. But rather, when we see church this way, I'm going to church to receive the word of God, the gift of Christ, as the Holy Spirit works by that very word, as God comes down to us, giving us his gifts. Remember, what does it say about the Holy Spirit? That he enlightens us with his gifts, that he calls us by the gospel, that he sanctifies and keeps us in the true faith. It's like, in other words, uh, the vernacular here would say, I got to go to church because this is just what we do. Here it's, man, I got to go to church. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. I can't wait to see what God is going to give me by his word. Right? That he's going to comfort me in the gifts of his forgiveness. Confession and absolution. Confessing our sins. Repent. Right? Hear the words of absolution. That forgiveness. Hearing the preaching of the law and gospel. Showing us our sin. Seeing Jesus, the one who uh, has been delivered and, and delivered up for us in his death and resurrection. Right? The Lord's Supper. Giving the gifts. God to man. Right? Like, if we're really honest with ourselves and we know who we are, that why we go to church is clear. We know the Holy Spirit works by that very word. Right? And that's why we go. And, you know, I, I, I can't, I tell that to my kids all the time. I, you know, you guys are so blessed because you could hear this time and time again. Because so long I was mired in this. Oh, man, I got to go to church. Really? You know, like, oh, the football game's on. Come on, you know? It's been a long week. I'm tired. I want to rest. Now this. Thanks be to God that in this long week, I can rest in God's word that comforts me by the power of the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit, by the word, when you hear the preached word, Holy Spirit's working. When you hear those words uh, from confession and absolution, Holy Spirit's working. When you hear the words in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, there we are directed back to the baptism that God has given to us where the Holy Spirit has worked and continues to lead us in our life as the Spirit of truth. See, don't you see, this is a comforting time as the Holy Spirit works through the word, a sustaining time. And that's why the word is so important. Right? See, the great deception is this. I, I don't have to go to church this week. Right? Um, I already know the word. I've heard that before. You know, let, just let me rest. Let me do my thing. I'll go next week. I don't know about you, friends, but me, when I hear that preaching, whew, I'm just like, thanks be to God for the word because I needed to hear that. You know? Oh. And there are moments in life where you're like, that moment in the morning when you get ready, you're like, I don't want to go. But when you do go, you're like, thanks be to God, because I needed to hear that. The comforting words of the gospel, I need to hear that through the cut heart of my own sin. Like, this is so great. Pentecost from then and right now, it is all the same. Right? You know, friends, it's a church here at Faith Moore Park. I love our church. I love everyone here, and, and it's been great. But, not but, sorry. But I think it's, it's very important to remember who we are. We're not, we're not, we're not bringing the pizzazz, right? We're not, we're not trying to bring anything else but simply the Word of God. Because His Word of God, this Word of God is true. And this is what we trust. Right? And I, I think that is what we see at Pentecost. As they're proclaiming the mighty works of God, people are coming to the faith because at the end of the day, it's all about the word. Right? We are gathered by that very word and there the Holy Spirit works to give us this comfort. No, no. We don't have to change anything or, or, or be like relevant or, or, or be edgy or be whatever we want to call it. Just stick with the word and trust what the word gives. I think that's why at the end of the day when we talk about baptism and all these things you know, that God gives, it, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look, um, what's the word? Uh, so um, it doesn't look flashy. It doesn't look, it just looks so normal, right? 
But yet it's the greatest thing because it's all rooted in the power of God's word and what the power of God's word does and the promise that he gives, right? And this is what Pentecost is all about. Remember that. I um, love it. The mighty works of God. Let's just stick with this, right? Stick with the word of God and there we find our comfort. No changing, no twisting, no changing of the law. I don't like that law. Let's just change that. Let's be dictated by the culture and, you know, uh, kind of twist this and do our spiritual gymnastics and say, ah, oh, kind of like that. That's not relevant. And no, let's just stick with the word. Because there we find our peaceable conscience, knowing that in our sin, for what it really is, there Jesus is by the very word of God to comfort us by the mighty work of God, this gospel. And there we find our peace, saved and rescued by the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. There's nothing better than that. <laughs> nothing more to hear. I mean, nothing better than that to hear. Because this is who we are by the mighty work of God. We are his children. So remember that this day, friends. Thank you for <laughs> holding on here till 945. Hopefully this goes well with you on this Friday. Join us on Sunday bulletin here already fully printed the full service printed thanks be to god this is online as well as uh, we will put this online so join us uh 8 30 a.m sunday live pacific standard time the 8 30 service will be live we are changing our time so we can have two services now 8 30 and 10 o'clock uh if you desire to come to church uh please sign up um so we know how many are coming we're we're getting we're we're almost there we're almost there to full, but um, uh, if you are, please sign up when you are able. But uh, if you are um, if you are watching at home online, uh, this bulletin will be up for you. All right. God's blessings to you this day. Why don't we close with a word of prayer? Dearly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this day. Bless us, O Lord, by your word, where there the Holy Spirit guides us to the truth. Lord, may this truth comfort us as this truth has set us free. And may your truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ continue to grant us peace, knowing full well that we live in the redemption, that we are forgiven of our sins, and that we have life that is everlasting. Bless us in your word. Root us in your word. Comfort us by your word. So that by your word we may be led in your merciful consolation that only you give the giving of your Son. Lord, for all these things we are thankful. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, friends. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining in. And uh, whether you're seeing this right now or whether you're seeing this later, thank you uh, for, for journeying with me um, in these great 50 days of Easter. Onward to Pentecost. And blessings to you all. Have a good Friday. And uh, may you all enjoy this day in the name of the Lord. All right. Until next time, adios and goodbye.